Beautiful, straight out of the box there, that's lovely. Right, so here we are back. I've replaced the Hobby King servos with no torque with some nice digital Savox servos that certainly seem to do the biz much better. So now I'm going to try and give this its third maiden. See how we get on. Time for hat cam. Right, here we are. And uh, I'll try and fly closer if it's controllable this time. It'll make life a bit easier. You'll be able to see stuff on the hat cam. See if we can get this baby in the air. <laughs> Beautiful, straight out of the box there, that's lovely. Oh, and it is nicely responsive. Much better, those servos before were crap. Let's trim it out. Just needs a bit, bit of left trim. Yeah, that's flying nice now. The sun's not much cop, but I just want to keep reasonably close. So I'm only flying with very low throttle at the moment. Just make sure she's trimmed. Do a little bit of up. There you go. Now we'll do some speed runs and see how it goes. This is 4S. I've got a Tenergy Nanotech 4S 1800. I've got to say, there's too much down thrust on it. It tucks when you put power on. This is straight out of the box. It needs a lot of up to hold it back. So that, that needs to be changed. Take some of that down thrust off. Yeah, I could probably up the ailerons a little bit. It's fairly slow on the roll. Orientation's not that easy today, is it, Ron? Loser. <laughs> vertical? Yeah, it's got a bit of vertical, eh, Ron? Yeah. Does it glide? Down it does. It? Don't go straight down, true. Yeah. Uh, Here we go, we'll do a bit of a gliding circuit. Excuse the radio. I'm having to hold back on the stick here, so... It's an interesting trim. It's, um, it's hands off. It's nice straight and level at about a third throttle. If I push throttle and you watch what happens. Oh, now it goes straight. Okay. No, it's tucking with speed, so... Something interesting going on there. Maybe the wing itself isn't quite rigid enough. I'm not sure. It goes upside down. Yeah, when you get a bit of speed on, it still requires quite a bit of back stick to hold the nose up. So, I don't know if the wing itself is warping, because these servos certainly aren't um, kicking back like the Hobby King ones were. It's just so much nicer to fly. I might actually land and just change some of my settings a bit, see if I can get it to fly a little nicer. Let's do a circuit and land it. Bit of a crosswind today, isn't it, Ron? This is coming from the northeast, so. There you go, it Landed. just dropped a wing, dropped a wing at the very last minute there, so the handling characteristics are not perfect, but there's a good example to see what happens when the wing comes apart. There we go, pushes back together, no damage. I'm just going to tweak some of my transmitter settings here, and oh, batteries move forward, tweak some of my transmitter settings and see if I can make it a little more fun to fly. Okay, second flight of it, my throw's a bit wound back the expo to make it a bit more responsive, we'll see how she goes now.
Oh yes, nicely. Feeling a bit nicer on the sticks now. Yeah, it's more the way I like it. Roll rate's a bit snappier. Whoa, it's still got some funny tendencies. It just wants to tuck a bit on the dives. When you get the speed up, it wants to tuck its nose down. Whoa, yeah, it does. Maybe the CG's too far back, but it's on the marks. It's a uh, very odd handling. Did it want to tuck its nose down when it's inverted that you say it's sliding your CG? Yeah, with the lifting section, it's not quite the same though. No, it's actually pretty good inverted. Flies better inverted than the right way up, to be honest. <laughs> and the glide, without, without any elevator, she just dives. So, it's interesting. There's something strange. CG's in the right place. Um, it still just doesn't quite groove. A little bit more up trim. There we go. That's... Now it climbs. In fact, it does a full power loop. With it, just two clicks of up trim. That was interesting. Didn't even touch the elevator then. <laughs> it was two clicks of up trim. <laughs> Maybe the CG, I think, might be too far back, just looking at the way it's behaving, because it is very um, wanting to tuck at speed. <clears throat> yeah, I'll just I'll put one click in and see what happens. Well, that's flying better now. Yeah, one click of up trim, but see, it's getting into a dive out there. Just once the faster it goes, it just starts to tuck. Which is, I wonder if there's some kind of um, bending of those elevons that would cause that. Because I'm having to pull back to keep it in the air at, at high speed, quite a bit. Actually, let's just check out that stall again while we're up there. Because that was pretty nasty at the ground there. Let's just slowly pull back, pull back, pull back, pull back. Oh, there we go. It's in a flat spin. Oh, no, it's come out again. And now it's flying. Okay, full up elevator. But it did go into a bit of a spin there. Dropped a wing and then carried on. So, yeah. Maybe I need to put more tape on the wings to tighten them up. Maybe the wing's just too flexible. I didn't put all the tape on. So maybe, because that is a very wobbly wing. A very wobbly wing. So far, I'm still not really chuffed to bits with this plane. It's still not. You know, I've had much better flying wings than this. Got you, Ron. <laughs> okay, so why is this thing behaving so oddly? I think I have uh, an understanding of what's going on here. And it's, it's all to do with the fact that this is a very, very powerful uh, craft. It actually flies pretty damn quick. And it has that 2500 kV motor with four cells. Now the, the 1800 mAh Tenergy 130C battery just didn't last very long. So there's a fair bit of juice going into this thing. And that's where you get your speed from. And what I think is happening, if let's take a look at this. I'll just put a bit of up on here. Now remember that to fly, as I said in my theory video on this, you've got to have reflex on a wing to make it fly, which means that the... Oh, I've exaggerated for the purposes of clarity here. The elevons have to be reflex slightly, a slightly up position. And what I think is happening here is that this is just EPP. And it's not molded EPP, it's wire cut EPP, which means it's really, really flexible. The elevons themselves are very flexible. If you look here, I can, with just one finger, it's so easy to bend this elevon at the tip back down to level. You can see if I, I can actually, hopefully here while I hold the camera, look, look how much flexibility is in these elevons. That is like, what? So what's happening is, at low to medium throttle settings, this thing flies beautifully. It, it does track and groove and it's, it's very predictable and stable, but when you open up the wick, it tries to go into a dive. And what I think is happening is, the, when the airspeed gets high enough, the wind blows the elevons down. So your reflex disappears, your up elevator effectively disappears, and so it goes into a dive. These are just too, too flexible by far. You can displace these a huge amount very, very easily. So what I'm going to try for the next flight, which won't be today because my observer's gone home, is I'm going to strengthen up, stiffen up these elevons immensely. Now, they, as I say, they do give you tape like this. 
but uh, I don't think that tape's going to cut it for these because it'll provide lengthwise to, uh, rigidity but not torsional. In fact, you can see the wing here's got very limited torsional rigidity as it is. Um, I think Matt Ogborn would throw about 30 kilos of carbon at this wing because it's, it really is quite a floppy wing. Wire cut EPP is very floppy. So I'm going to stiffen up these elevons remarkably. I'm going to make them very, very stiff. Uh, I'll find a way to do that. And then we'll fly it again. I have a feeling that once I've stiffened those elevons, then even at high speed, this will fly very nicely. It's got great potential, but they just haven't, the material they've used is just not suited to the task here. It needs to have something to make it stiffer. Now, the mini race wing, by comparison, it flies just as fast as this, but it grooves all the way. And that's probably because it has a plastic skin on it. It has what we call a tensile skin. I may do a video on a materials analysis video on this because tensile skins make even the floppiest substances like EPP very very rigid and the reason they give you that tape in this kit is probably to try and allow you to create a tensile skin. And that's going to work for the wing itself but it's not going to work for the elevon because you just can't get rigidity by putting tape on there. You have to use triangulation to get the rigidity. You can get lengthwise stiffness but you can't get torsional which is twisting rigidity on a flat surface just using tape. So stay with me, we're going to do some work on this wing. I think it's got great potential as I say, but as it stands, out of the box, it's not really sort of suited to high speed. <laughs> it's, if you fly it on three cells, it'll probably fly really well, perfectly, no problems, because it's not going to go as fast as it does on four. In fact, what I might do next time is fly it on three cells just to see the difference. But in the meantime, there you go. Now, if you've got questions, comments, anything to say on this, then please put them in the place provided by YouTube. Provided by YouTube. I'll do my best to answer them. And I hope you've found this enlightening. Now, I know a lot of the people who have reviewed this have said it's great, it's fantastic, it's wonderful, with their affiliate links in the description. Um, I don't have an affiliate link to this, so I'm not going to tell you that it's a fantastic model, because this one, as it stands at the moment, isn't really up to scratch. But who knows, once I've stiffened it up a bit, it may be a cracker model. So stay tuned and you'll see what happens. If you're not a subscriber, subscribe so you can see the next videos and make sure you get the full information. In the meantime, thanks for watching. Bye for now.